Gabriel Conroy, the story's protagonist, often finds himself longing for an escape. Instead of fraternizing at the party, he stands in the corner. When the lancers were over, Gabriel went away to a remote corner of the room where Freddie Mallins' mother was sitting. He finds himself daydreaming about the outdoors, looking out the window instead of dancing with his friends. Gabriel's warm, trembling fingers tapped the cold pane of the window. How cool it must be outside. How pleasant it would be to walk out alone, first along by the river and then through the park. The snow would be lying on the branches of the trees and forming a bright cap on the top of the Wellington Monument. He then directly states how he'd prefer being out in the cold than at the party. How much more pleasant it would be there than at the supper table. When he's asked to accompany Miss Ivers to the Aran Islands for vacation, he rejects the invitation in favour of cycling in Europe and defends it by saying that... Irish. Oh no, if it comes to that, Irish is not my language. And that... To tell you the truth, I'm sick of my own country. I'm sick of it. There's also an interesting parallel between the character of Gabriel and James Joyce himself. Joyce had a complex relationship with his native Ireland and often sought to escape its cultural and political constraints. Similarly, Gabriel yearns for a sense of freedom and fulfillment beyond the confines of his everyday existence. The character of Gabriel is not the only place where themes of escapism are present. The party serves as a method of escapism, drawing attendees with the promise of excitement and diversion. It is a chance to shed their everyday concerns and immerse themselves in a world of music, dance, and companionship. Now here we are met, momentarily away from the bustle of our everyday routines. The music at the party specifically is a symbol for escapism. The music transports characters and listeners alike, evoking emotions and temporarily freeing them from the constraints of reality. Greta has a particularly vivid reaction to the song The Last of Ogram. She is noticeably entranced by the song, completely checking out of the situation, losing herself in the song. Greta also, in a more metaphorical sense, escapes the past of her love with Michael Fury. For a while, she declines to tell Gabriel about her past, almost repressing it, thus escaping the reality of her feelings. In The Dead, James Joyce invites us to contemplate the allure and limitations of escapism. Through Gabriel's journey in the haunting melodies of the last Vagram, we witness the complexities of seeking refuge from the mundanity of life. Escapism, whether through daydreams, music, and parties, offers a temporary respite. But it is through the process of confronting reality that true growth and fulfillment are achieved. By the end, Gabriel goes through a powerful transformation. As Gabriel confronts the painful truth of Greta's past, he discovers the true richness and depth of life through an inner monologue detailing his emotions. His soul swooned slowly as he heard the snow falling faintly through the universe and faintly falling like the descent of their last end upon all the living and the dead. James Joyce's The Dead leaves us with a profound message. We are reminded to embrace the present, to live with passion, to seek understanding and empathy, and to recognize that true beauty in life lies not in escapism, but the genuine connections we forge with others and experiences that life gives us.